Hello, today I'm going to talk to you about gaming and education. Sometimes when people talk about gaming and education, they confuse it with gamification. I would like to take a minute to discuss what the difference is. Gamification is the idea of adding game elements to a non-game situation. Corporate reward programs are a good example. They reward users for certain behavior. Dunkin' Donuts is one example of a company that does a good job of this with their mobile app and the rewards that you can receive. In education, gamification systems like Classcraft, Live School, and Class Dojo add an adventure layer on top of the existing course infrastructure. Each of these varies a little, but the basic idea is that kids earn points for positive behavior and lose points for negative behavior. Unlike gamification, game-based learning relates to the use of games to enhance the learning experience. Before we talk about gaming and education, I think it's important that you know about the history. Playing games in the classroom is nothing new. Educators have been using games in the classroom for years. Logo programming was the first real educational game that was released in 1967. Its intent was to teach people how to program using the logo programming language. Lemonade Stand was released in 1973. This was a business simulation game and taught players basic economics. In 1982, Oregon Trail was released. This game is said to have had the biggest impact on educational games. Because of its success, the number of educational games increased exponentially after its massive success. Games like Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego, Reader Rabbit, and Number Munchers were some of the popular games that began to make their way into homes and classrooms around the world. While graphics may not have been great, the games helped engage a generation of kids with technology and laid a solid foundation for the educational games that were to come. The benefits of gaming have been widely debated. Some believe there are not advantages, while others believe there are only advantages. The truth is the advantages and disadvantages of gaming in education depends primarily on the individual, the game, and the method. It is important to remember this when utilizing gaming for educational purposes. The Huffington Post reported that all gaming, even those that focus primarily on violence, can benefit students. Whether or not you agree with this, their article offers an interesting point, that gaming nurtures a student's social abilities through multiplayer games. Multiplayer games can also help gamers to develop team building and leadership skills, which may apply to real world situations. In fact, for most gamers, gaming is a highly social activity. 70% of gamers play with their friends who are in the same room, and only 20% play alone. In many of these games, players work together in teams to achieve goals, compete against other players, or both. Some of the additional benefits are that video games make people happy and they relieve stress. They also help to improve a tolerance for failure and improve critical thinking skills and reading comprehension. They also help gauge children's cognitive development and facilitate individualized learning. Many teachers think games can motivate struggling students Low performing students are often disengaged from what is happening in the classroom and require the most individualized learning plans. Games are an effective vehicle for addressing these learning gaps. Some games offer fluid and literary like engagement with ethically and morally complicated situations. Games such as Pixelberry's own high school story allows players to explore complex ethical and moral problems that can otherwise be difficult to simulate. These games allow players to grapple with sensitive issues in an environment free from social pressure or fear of consequences. Then when put in similar situations in the real world, they are better equipped to figure things out for themselves and make good choices. The best educational games aren't just tools for learning. They show kids that education can be fun and instill a love of learning that will carry on throughout their lives. While interviewing typical users from elementary school, middle school, and high school, they mentioned some of the games they enjoy and use. They were Prodigy, Brain Pop, Fun Brain, ABC, uh, ABC Mouse, Starfall, Kahoot, Quizzes, and Minecraft. Prodigy is a favorite among elementary school children. I find this surprising because the graphics are horrible. The students say they love it because they not only get to create their own avatar, but they also get to go to different worlds and verse their friends. The teachers love it because they can assign standards for the kids to work on that align with what they're doing in class, and they can also see how their kids are performing. In recent years, there's been this emphasis on whether games are better than traditional instruction, but that's not really a helpful distinction because it's not an either-or concept. 
The research shows that games as a medium can be effective, but not always. Design is what really matters. Nobody assumes that all lectures, labs, or books are simply good because of their medium. One of the biggest ongoing criticisms of games and technology in general is that it promotes antisocial behavior and isolates individuals. While some of this may have been true prior to the explosion of Web 2.0 technologies, it certainly is not any longer. The focus of most new games is in social play. While players may not be interacting face-to-face, -face, they are interacting nonetheless. In fact, these technologically mediated interactions mirror much of the real-world communication that drives our personal lives and business. The process and social norms taught by these interactions represent very real and useful skills that translate perfectly outside of games. Shortened attention span is a criticism of all modern media. The often rapid pace of action and the immediate feedback can make people expect the same kinds of fast-paced, instantaneous response of all things. While that may not translate to every context, it certainly is a direction in which our hyper-connected global society is headed. However, with hours of intense concentration and problem solving, games do promote sustained focus, just in non-traditional ways. Another criticism is that some games try to teach more than one subject and become too cluttered. These games offer too much information at once and the lessons they attempt to teach become buried. Some games have the opposite problems and don't teach enough. More research is needed on exactly which aspects and design elements of digital games work best at improving student learning. Educational games have their good and bad points. Some people remember these games fondly and others not so much. They started off simple and just like the rest of the video game industry, they have grown and evolved over time. But the power these games offer might make all the difference in the world.